Well, hello there. We are going to find the first three non-zero terms of the Taylor series for this given function about a equals 4. Let me write out the general Taylor series first. If we're given that the Taylor series is going to be centered at a equals 4, then we get the following. So what we really need to do here is find all of these function values in this Taylor series. And to do that, what we need to do is take derivatives of the given function and then plug x equals 4 into those derivatives. All right, so our function is the square root of 8x minus x squared. It's a little bit easier to take the derivatives of this function if we write it as a 1 half power instead of having a square root. If we want to take the first derivative of this function, we're going to start with the power rule because we have this function to the 1 half power. That means we're going to multiply by the 1 one half, and we're going to reduce the power by 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then don't forget the chain rule. We need to multiply by the derivative of this function inside the parentheses. And the derivative of 8x is 8, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. All right, I can already tell this is going to be a messy problem, but we can simplify this function a little bit by distributing this 1 half through this second set of parentheses. The reason I would do that is just to get rid of the 1 half so that we don't have fractions in this problem. And I'm noticing that if we multiply 8 by a half we get 4 and if we multiply 2x by a half we just get x so that looks a little bit simpler. All right we are asked for the first three non-zero terms so we're going to have to do this derivative at least one more time. To find a second derivative of this function we're going to need to use the product rule. First I'm going to copy down this first term and then I'm going to take the derivative of the second term which is just negative 1. Then I'm going to have to take the derivative of this first term which is going to involve the power rule again and don't forget that we need to take a chain rule here and then since we've taken the derivative of this first term now, now we just need to copy down the second term. All right, let's do a step of simplification. And we can do that by distributing this 1 half here into this 8 minus 2x again. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we can see that we now have two terms that are both 4 minus x. And they're multiplied, so I'm going to instead call this 4 minus x squared. Okay, we might want to simplify that a little bit more, but we have three functions now, the original function and its first two derivatives. So let's try to plug in our a value of 4 and see what coefficients we get. f of 4, which is the first term in our Taylor series, we're going to get by just replacing x with a 4. That's going to give us 32 minus 16 to the 1 half power. That's going to be 16 to the 1 half power, which is the square root of 16, or in other words, 4. The next term in our Taylor series involves f prime of 4. So we need to plug x equals 4 into this function. And you can see right away that this factor here, this 4 minus x, is going to go to 0 if we plug in x equals 4. So this coefficient is going to be 0, which is pretty sad because we need to find the first three non-zero terms of this Taylor series. And ultimately what that means is we're going to need to take another derivative below. So hopefully I don't sound too disappointed. Let's get our coefficient for this next term, though. We need f double prime of 4. And that means we're going to plug x equals 4 into this function. And you can see that this this factor right here is going to go to zero when we do that. Therefore, this entire term is going to be zero, so we can ignore this piece. If we plug x equals 4 into this first term, we get negative, and then in parentheses, 16 to the negative 1 half power. That negative exponent means that this result is just going to end up going to the denominator. So we're going to have negative 1 fourth as our f double prime of 4. Okay, let's try to prep this function for another derivative. What I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 8x minus x squared to the negative 3 halves power from each of these two terms. If I do that from the first term, what's going to be left is an 8x minus x squared to the first power. You can confirm this by imagining what would happen if you multiplied this factor by this factor. You would have to add the exponents, and that exponent would become negative 1 half, and we would get this original term back. Now, if we factor this 8x minus x squared to the negative 3 halves power out of the second term, we would just be left with a 4 minus x, the quantity, squared. And because we factored a negative out, this minus here should turn into a plus. Now, I think we should probably simplify what's in these brackets here. If we FOIL out what's in parentheses, we're going to get some terms to cancel, and thank goodness 
goodness, I'm so glad we did that step because everything cancels except for the 16, and we're actually left with a fairly simple function. Now we are set up to take a third derivative of this function. To do that, we're going to start with a power rule, and then we need to take a chain rule. The derivative of that inside function, again, is 8 minus 2x. We can simplify again. I think I would factor a 2 out of this factor here. Doing that and taking that 2 and multiplying out in the front of the function and simplifying everything we can simplify is just going to give us, I believe, a 48. And then this factor is going to be a 4 minus x. Okay, so good news and bad news here. The good news is this derivative wasn't so bad. The bad news is when we plug in x equals 4 to plug it into the Taylor series right here, what we get for f prime of 4, sorry, f triple prime of 4 is just going to be 0 because this factor is going to be 0 when we plug in x equals 4. So what that means is we need one more derivative to get a third non-zero term for this Taylor series. All right, let's do it. Um, the derivative of this function is going to require a product rule because we have a product of two functions. So I'm going to start by copying down the first function and taking a derivative of the second function. Then I'm going to add and I'm going to take a derivative of the first function and multiply that by the second function. Now I think we're going to get a non-zero answer here so I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can plug in x equals 4 to our fourth derivative. Notice that this factor is going to just be 0 if we plug in x equals 4. So this entire term is going to go to 0. That's going to leave us with a negative 40 and then plugging 4 in here is going to give us a 32 minus 16 again, this time to the negative 5 halves power. All right, let's simplify that a little bit. All right, we need 16 to the 5 halves power. Well, the 2 in the denominator of that exponent means we're going to take a square root. So we can take that square root and we would call it 4 to the 5th power. And 4 to the 5th is 1024. And simplifying that fraction is going to give us negative 3 64ths. Okay, that is going to be our third non-zero coefficient of this Taylor series. So let's go back up, let's zoom out here and look at all of the work that we did. And let's come up with our final answer. Our original function is going to be approximately 4 plus the zero term, which I won't write down, minus a 1 fourth x minus 4 squared over 2 factorial, plus another zero term, which I'm not going to write down, then minus a 3 64th times x minus 4 to the fourth power over 4 factorial. A step of simplification is going to give us our final answer. 1 fourth divided by 2 factorial is 1 eighth, and 3 64ths divided by 4 factorial is 1 over 5 12. Okay, so those are the first three non-zero terms of our Taylor series for the given function centered at a equals 4. All right, it's been lovely, but I can't say I want to do that again. <laughs> Let's try for an easier one next time. All right, I'll see you there.